We have loads of data that show the amazing benefits of bike-friendly infrastructure. So why hasn't it spread everywhere? It's because facts never moved anyone to action. Emotional stories move people. And we have a storytelling problem. These are nice outcomes of bicycle urbanism. Bike-friendly infrastructure is about people. It's about saving lives and restoring individual freedom. We're dealing with issues far more important than healthy trees and clean air. Our culture is programmed to think speeding in cars with zero delay is the ideal condition. And so it's okay that traffic crashes are the number one killer of children. Speed is our idol, and level of service is the altar where we sacrifice our babies. Walking and biking makes our body pump out natural antidepressants. And the next most natural medication is a plant the government doesn't want you to have. Meanwhile, our taxes subsidize actual deadly stuff. Roads. Prohibition is typical statism. The authorities don't care about your health and wellness until it interferes with their elections. Imagine instead a future where our kids have the freedom to safely ride a bicycle. Most people can't relate to the little outfits and the little hats. Hardcore cycling is great, but it's the 1%. You can't win over the masses on a platform that appears designed for the 1%. Thinking like an anarchist means creating solutions as if we lived in a stateless society. Self-governance, non-aggression. We'd never even consider stealing someone's front yard to increase the clear zone. Blend in with the planners, architects, and engineers responsible for brutalist, car-oriented atrocities. They'll get comfortable with you, invite you to speak at their conferences, write for their newsletters, that's when you begin the liberation. The internet is no joke. I used to think prodigy message boards were fun. Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, the meeting places for your intellectual riot. The easy information exchange terrifies the status quo. Uh, who? Someone else, I hope. 35,000 Americans were killed in traffic last year. Imagine a Donald Trump product like that. The fact is, no private company can ever compete with the state when it comes to death and destruction. George Lois is sometimes called the original madman. He's an inspiration for any storyteller. And isn't this the most popular response to your ideas? We're not here to conform. Don't succumb to the devil's advocate. Traffic deaths are like having a 9-11 every month. The state fights for conformity, preserving the status quo. Transportation professionals who go with the flow are on mental autopilot. Let's talk solutions. The Second Amendment protects an engineer's right to bear AutoCAD, but background checks are probably an easy sell. Ma'am, have you ever treated traffic models as science? Anarcho-urbanism leads to some interesting possibilities. The state wants to speed up car traffic. You want to get people out of cars so they can touch and smell each other. That's traffic engineering I'd get behind. Management is overseeing a process. Leadership is different. Being fully prepared means it's been done a million times. Copy, paste. That's highway engineering, and I don't think that's what you want. Do we love worshiping sacred fabric and books or what? If you think like a statist, elevated and protected bike paths are gonna freak you out. But you know what? Go ahead and burn a flag. Here's an idea of what that looks like. 
The ITE trip generation manual assumes every new building creates new car trips. In real life, people change their driving patterns. But traffic engineering isn't about real life. Your stories can be more influential than you think. Don't bore your friends with trend lines and research papers. Remember, facts don't move people to action. Emotion moves people. Observe, take pictures, share your anecdotes. I think Albert Einstein said, if you can't tweet your story, you don't know it well enough. Help people imagine a future where grandparents can ride bikes at night in dark clothes with no helmets. You need stories, not spandex. Dress like an architect. Think like an anarchist. That's the path to success for the 21st century designer.